In this video, we will consider collecting data and designing experiments. Coming right up. You probably won't be called upon to design your own statistical study, but you will likely be called on to decide, is a study credible? Should I believe the results? So you want to know what the guidelines are for a valid statistical study. Firstly, you need to identify the variable you want to study, the focus of the study, and the population of the study. You'll most likely be sampling, so you want to ensure the sample represents the whole population that you're interested in. Then, of course, a process to collect the data. After the data is collected, you want to describe the data. That gives you your first pass to understanding it. And we use descriptive statistics. We draw charts and that kind of thing. And then you want to interpret the data using inferential statistics and make decisions about the data. You also want to identify any possible errors in the study. There are two types of studies we talk about, observational and experimental. In observational studies, the researcher just observes and measures the variable of interest in the population of interest. He doesn't or she doesn't not try to influence any of the responses. So, for example, if you are interested in smoking and lung cancer in females, you would identify a group of females uh, smokers and observe and measure their health impacts over time. The other type of study is an experimental study and the researcher is very deliberate here. They apply a treatment and then observe responses. So they divide the population up into a treatment group and a control group. The treatment group receives the treatment and the control group often receives a harmless placebo that looks just like the treatment, and then the two groups are compared. One example might be a study observing multivitamins and the incidence of flu. So the researchers may get a group of people the same age, put them into two groups, each with the same characteristics, and half are given the multivitamin and half are given the harmless placebo, and their health uh, is observed over time. There's ways to co collect data. We might collect data via a simulation, and this uses a mathematical or a physical model to collect data. Uh, automotive companies use crash test dummies, so that would be a physical model. And an example of a simulation, airlines might study pilot behavior by putting them in a flight simulator and then running through a crash, which obviously would not be safe to do otherwise. Another way to collect data is to have people answer questions about your variable or your topic of interest. You've probably done this. A lot of businesses conduct customer satisfaction surveys. Experiments have to be very carefully designed and executed. A lot of things can unwittingly influence the result. Sometimes just the very fact that subjects are in a study changes their behavior. This is called the Hawthorne effect. So there's three key uh, ideas for good design or processes. You want to make sure you have a control group. You want to have randomization and replication. Let's talk about those next. When designing a study, it's very important to account for all the variables that may impact what you're studying. A confounding variable is an extra variable that the researcher didn't account for. An example might be in a study of heavy drinkers, it will be very important to control for other lifestyle factors like smoking. If you didn't control for smoking, that would be a confounding variable. And then if at the end of the study you found negative health effects, you wouldn't be able to say whether that was from the drinking or the smoking. It's also very important to account for the placebo effect. And this happens when a subject reacts to the placebo, even though it's a harmless fake medicine, if you like. One uh, example is Boy Scout counselors have sometimes reported uh, of giving kids homesickness pills, and with a, within about 15 minutes, they feel better, and the pills are Tic Tacs. Blinding. 
is where the subjects don't know whether they're getting the treatment or the placebo. And double blind experiments, neither the experimenter or the subjects, nor the subjects know whether they're getting the placebo or the treatment. And this is really the preferred methodology by researchers, double blind studies. Randomization is the process of randomly assigning subjects to different groups, like the control group or the treatment group. In a completely randomized design, subjects are sorted out completely randomly. But sometimes it might be necessary for the experimenter to put people in blocks or groups. The experimenter might want to do that by age or perhaps by gender. Um, that's sometimes called the randomized block design. In other designs, um, there might be a match pair designs where the experimenters try to match each subject, one with a treatment and one without a treatment, or one with a treatment, one without a treatment, one with a placebo, all kinds of different uh, varieties, but that would be a matched pair design. Um, you want to make sure that it's a random assignment, though. That's a very important part of a good design. Replication means that we can repeat an experiment under the same or similar conditions in a different location by a different researcher and get the same result as long as the conditions were the same. And the more we can do that, the more we believe our result. Next, we'll talk about sampling techniques. Remember that a census is a count of an entire population. But you can imagine that's pretty expensive and often very difficult to perform. Actually impossible if you think about it most of the time for a large population, because people die and are being born all the time. So what we normally do is we take a sample of a large population, and that's a subset of the population. And we use, we try to get unbiased data. So we want a sample that's as close to the real population as we can get. And we can never get it perfect. So we always get just a little bit of sampling error. Remember that we want to have a minimal amount of sampling error. We want our sample to really represent our population. So we want a random sample where every member of the population has got an equal chance to be selected in the study. The simplest way to get a random sample is called the simple random sample, where every possible sample of the same size has the same probability or chance to be selected. We might also need to do a stratified sample. If we have members of the population that are divided by, let's say, age, we might divide the population into young adults, middle-aged and elderly, and then we'd want to take a random sample for, from each one of those groups to ensure that we have adequate representation from each of the groups or strata. So if a population falls into naturally occurring subgroups, each of which has similar characteristics, it might be the best thing to do to do a cluster sample. Cluster sampling uses all of the members from a randomly selected sample of clusters. So an example of this, let's suppose you're interested in the road driving or conditions or road conditions in cities of Colorado, then natural clusters would be Denver and Colorado Springs. So you would just sample those two clusters and you wouldn't necessarily worry about the other areas. The last type of sampling methodology I want to talk about is the systematic sample. So in this case, every member of the population is assigned a number, and then members of the population are ordered in some way. Usually the starting number is randomly generated, and then sample members are selected at, every, at regular intervals from the starting number, maybe every 1,000th or every one. 10,000th person is selected, that kind of thing. It's very easy to use, um, but uh, it's not right in every situation. If there's a regularly occurring pattern in the data, you'd want to avoid this methodology. In summary, we talked about how to design a valid statistical study and how to look at the difference between an observational or an experimental study. We discussed collecting data, either using surveys or simulations. 
and how to design an experiment if thou study is an experimental one. And very importantly, how to create a valid random sample. It must be random. There's different ways of collecting a random sample. There are simple, stratified, cluster or systematic methodologies. We don't want to get a biased sample by just asking anyone who's interested. That leads to a biased study and invalid results. I would like to invite you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much for listening.